everyone, if you're watching this, we're just converting dad's office area, bedroom. Bring in the art department. I mean, honestly, this egg could work with this. We are good. Here we are in a more gay space. Yeah. All right, so, ooh, that lip gloss is popping. That lip gloss is popping. Your lip gloss is popping. The lip gloss lesbians. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm so excited about this video. I have my good friend, Arielle D'Angelo, who is a self-love coach. She is TikTok famous. Can we just say, I checked your TikTok this morning. She's huge on TikTok. And she's overall just an amazing person and advocate for the LGBTQ community. She was also in a sorority in college. So that's what we're going to be talking about today because I feel like it's not talked about a lot. So I'm excited. All right, now introduce yourself. Amazing. Thank you so much for having me, Maddie. I'm so excited to be here today with you and I just feel so grateful. Um, my name is Arielle. My pronouns are she, her, and I am an LGBTQ coach, self-love coach specifically, and also the founder of We The Rainbow, a next level personal development company for LGBTQ plus people. So I, yeah, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. I can't wait to get into this conversation. I feel like, you know, this convo around being a gay person who has also been in a sorority is such a common question I get asked, like, especially through my Instagram audience. And I'm just so excited to like really dive into this today. It's so important. Mm -hmm. It is so important. One thing that I've learned for sure is like as soon as, I think I had an Instagram post about this recently, um, and it's actually one of the questions that we got, um, but once I came out, and I'm not taking the credit away from all the other courageous, brave women who came out after, but I think it took somebody to be like, okay, it's okay, and the years following me coming out, more girls than ever brought girl dates to crush parties and formal. So um, I'm not saying I caused that at all, but representation matters. Yeah, it's so true. And I always like, I tell my clients this, but I always say you never know who you're inspiring by simply living your authentic life or by being your authentic self. Like there's always somebody watching. There's always somebody witnessing you and appreciating you from afar. And I mean, I know that that was true for me when I was in college and I whether it was like I heard really distant stories about people who I grew up with being LGBT or um, I saw a girl in my sorority bring a girl to a date party. Like I was always observing very silently, very secretively from afar, but it made such a difference to me. So it doesn't matter if like this is what you do for a living. It doesn't matter if you're like an LGBTQ plus coach or influencer. Like even if you're just someone who is living authentically in your day-to-day -day life, you are probably impacting so many more people than you know. I love that. Yep, just living your life. I, like, one of my favorite quotes right now is, like, um, accept what you're going through and grow through what you go through because soon your story that you tell is going to become someone else's survival guide. And I love that. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love that also. Um, Okay, so let's dive in. Where did you go to school and what sorority were you in? I went to Tulane University in New Orleans and I was in Pi Phi. Nice. So yeah, I mean, Tulane is in the South, but like people always consider it like a Northern school in the South. Um, but there were like hardly any out gay people. I mean, or like queer people in general. Um, I think like my sorority was like there were probably a few people that i was aware of being gay or bi or queer um but i definitely felt like super alone in that when i was closeted that was one of my questions because i we call it a southern school just because i'm from new york but i went to university of delaware i was in a5 um and what i it, it was a very progressive campus and I was going to ask you because you were in a southern school how did the climate on campus like really 
shape your idea of what it was going to be like when you came out because of the views are very different in um, Louisiana than New York. Totally. Yeah. So I think it's interesting because like New Orleans is also like a whole other situation. Um, New Orleans is in Louisiana, but it is like a very like progressive, liberal, like forward thinking, just like they don't give a fuck about anything kind of a city. So like anything goes there. Um, And I feel like New Orleans made me, or like the school culture and the city culture, if anything, made me feel like safe that I was with people who were like so open-minded for the most part. Um, But I think that with that, um, you know, Greek life is a super heteronormative um, culture. And that definitely was scary for me as I was navigating the coming out process. So just to give like a little bit of a background, I, when I went to college, like freshman year, I didn't even think I was gay. I really so badly wanted to be straight more than like anything in the world. And I wanted to fit into that identity and that narrative and have that fairy tale ending in my life. And that now when I said, I'm like, that would not have been my fairy tale ending. Um, but yeah, so I basically in college, like dated guys, fully identified as straight, like, uh, oh yeah, fully identified as straight, fully tried to date guys. And then like, it was my junior year of college where I just like hit this wall and was like, okay, like I still like guys, but like something is like not feeling totally right in me. I think there was so much like trauma and stuff that I had suppressed in my life that I had never fully processed or dealt with. So I kind of like had a period of time my junior year where I was just incredibly depressed and anxious and like felt so trapped. I was in an abusive relationship that was a secret. Yeah, I mean, everything just came like crumbling down. Um, and I went to this seven day retreat that like absolutely changed my life and made me realize that like being my authentic self was like the most beautiful thing. And then that's when I started to realize like, okay, I could be bi, I could maybe be fluid. I still identify as straight. Like in my head, I was like, I'm still straight. I just like, you know, there are these freak situations where I think a girl's really hot. (laughs) And like, that's that. Freak situation. (laughs) And like, I like hooking up with girls, but like, that's everyone does. Um, (laughs) So yeah. So yeah, that was kind of like the evolution and senior fall. I was just like, fuck, this is all starting to bubble up. Like I was actually like hooking up with this guy in college and he was amazing. He was awesome. I love him as a person, like to this day. And I was so confused because I did find him attractive. I did love hanging out with him, but like I knew something was like just so deeply missing and that I was continuing to force something that just wasn't naturally there. And that's kind of when I was like, okay, I'm definitely bi. And it was through seeing guys at my school who were gay and who like did not fit the gay stereotype at all, like me, Um, And we can talk about that because there is really no such thing as a gay stereotype. Like, let me freaking tell you, there are so many different types of lesbians. But but I believe that like I had to look this certain way to be gay. And my good guy friend who is gay and in a frat at Tulane came out. And that like really inspired me. And I was like, if he did it and he was so well received, like maybe I can do it too. And I just remember being so emotional when he came out and like realizing that there was like a breakthrough there and kind of realizing what was possible. When I first came out to my friends, they were, they were really accepting. And so everybody I lived with was in my sorority as well. And so I came out slowly to all of my, my best friends that were in my house and they were just like, they responded incredibly well. And we're just so supportive, so accepting, so loving, and like asked questions about it. Every little word that someone in your life says when you're a closeted person that's potentially like, you know, picking apart gay people or LGBTQ people or judging them, like 
it sticks and it hurts and it makes you question everything. Okay. So we have a couple questions. So you said that you came out to a couple friends at once. I mean, a couple friends instead of everybody at once, right? Yeah, I was debating like doing it a few different ways. Um, I wanted to do it at once because I was just like, let's just rip off the fucking band-aid. And so I ended up doing it one by one and I'm so happy it unfolded that way. You're the only one that is going through this challenge, this pain, this day in, day out obstacle of struggling with your sexuality and not knowing how to... Um, you know, like come out and it's your choice how you come out. It's nobody else's choice. Know that you can come out in whatever way feels most supportive and good for you. I did the Instagram thing. That's how I came out. I just wanted it to be, thank God for social media. That was like a beautiful thing. I didn't have to talk about it all the time. It was like, here it is. Here's proof. Maddie is confirming. No more questions. You'd be shocked how many people like will laugh or make fun of the way I came out because it was like a cop out. So I wrote a letter to my parents because I knew that if I did it in person, I would sob, I would cry. I probably wouldn't, I probably wouldn't be able to get the words out that I wanted to get out. And as you guys all know, my family is absolutely incredible. They are the best you could possibly ask for when you're coming out. But I was so scared that I wasn't going to be able to express myself in the way I wanted to. So I wrote a letter and some people say like, oh, she didn't even like actually do it. Because apparently it only counts if you stand there and say, I'm gay. No. Let's just, let's just uh, bust that myth right now. Bust that myth. I love that. I came out in the same way to my parents, but I came out to them very last. <laughs> um, yeah. And I wrote them a letter and I actually, I typed out a letter and I dropped it into my family text thread and my brother and sister already knew. And I was like, mom and dad, I'd really appreciate if you could take the time to read this today. Um, if you have any questions. I sent an email. It's really amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote an email and I said, mom, dad, please read this at the same time. They probably thought I needed them to like edit an essay or something. Oh, that's so awesome. I love it. Yeah, um, I, I was like, you can talk to Lexi and Michael, my brother and sister. They'll be available to answer your questions. I'm, on a, I'm in a meeting for the next three hours. They were like, we know she's not in a meeting. <laughs> and that's okay. Um, and yeah, and that is such a valid, beautiful way of coming out. And I agree with you. Like, I wanted to like bust any of their questions on the spot and kind of just share with them what my experience had been like and how difficult and challenging this had been for so many years and that I just needed their love and support more than ever. And I'm so happy I wrote the letter because had I not written that, I would have postponed my, like delayed my coming out for so long because I, could, I was unable to say it in person at the time. Yeah. You have to do what's best for you. That's it. Mm -hmm. Totally. And now they're like, and now she doesn't shut up about being gay. So <laughs> it's funny. It's funny how that happens. Um, okay. Let's answer some more questions. I put a box on my Instagram story. Did oh, you yeah. Check that. Um, someone asked, how did being in a sorority impact your coming out process or self-acceptance? Do you want to answer that from your perspective. Yeah. Can you say that one more time. How did being in a sorority impact your coming out process or self-acceptance? Um, I touched on that, but like, if you want to go any even deeper. Yeah. Um, it's actually interesting because I know, how big is your sorority? Like in each pledge class? I like totally forget how big it was. <laughs> like, uh, uh, at least a couple of like hundred, I'd say. Yeah, when we had all four classes, it was close to like 200 girls. Yeah. Um, sometimes even more depending on the size of the class. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a lot of people. And before college, I didn't even know that many people, right? Mm -hmm. So in a way, it was more challenging coming out in a sorority because so many people knew. Like there were so many more people, even though I did it on the internet, so many people found out 
that you know, when I joined a sorority, I gained like 400 followers from like the sisters who were older than me because you're all supposed to follow each other, you know? So my audience was bigger. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. It didn't make it harder. It didn't make it easier, but it was in my mind like, okay, there's like a big audience right now. So I think that's the only way that it shaped my coming out story. Just the mm-hmm. number of people that were following me was a greater Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Did that answer it? <laughs> yeah, no, I think that that, I think that was a beautiful answer. And I had a question and now I'm forgetting it. I think the main thing for anyone that's watching this right now, and if you're debating coming out over social media, something for me that I was going to do is I was going to start another Instagram account and come out there and then say that I was starting my self-love coaching business. And my sister was like, so what is your reason for creating a new account when you already have your audience on this Instagram? And I was like, because like then like not everyone needs to know that like I am coming out and only people who are like supportive will know. And I then thought about it and I was like, the only reason why I would be doing that or not coming out in general is because of fear. And the fear isn't enough to stop me in this mission of like wanting to normalize this and make this easier for humans all around the world. So I was like, fuck the fear. I'm just going to leap and do this. And it was one of the best things I've ever done in my whole life. So did you face any challenges being in a sorority that you wouldn't have faced being a regular student on campus? Was there anything about the heteronormative culture of Greek life that stood out to you that was very um, disheartening or challenging? Yeah, so a few things here. Um, I was in for like part of college, I was in like a very secret, abusive, toxic relationship with another woman. And that was hard because I felt like I had nobody to talk to. Like I, not one person in my life knew, like not my family, not my friends, not a therapist, nobody knew. So that was like a really lonely and hard journey especially when I was surrounded by people who very much like fit that heteronormative um, avatar. And so that was a bit difficult for me. And then beyond that, I think that in my sorority, I was like, okay, like to fit in, I need to date guys. I need to bring, you know, cis men to our date parties. I need to like chant the chance that they're cheering. And now looking back on all of this, I'm like, Greek life is so problematic. The fact that no one's recognized like how not okay some of these cheers are, even if they're a joke or how not okay, like they, they phrase like bringing a guy to a date party. Like it's just all so heteronormative. And that is so yeah, hard for people who are closeted, questioning in the LGBTQ community and trying to live authentically, but feeling like there's no place for them to do so. People who were like very involved in my sorority these past couple of years have reached out to me as they see what I'm doing and they've, they're straight identifying. And they've just said like, we are so sorry for how heteronormative our Greek life culture was for the inappropriate chants, for just like everything that was like so not okay that we perpetuated and tons of straight girls have like you know come to talk to me about this and just said like they're sorry and they apologize I'm like you have nothing to apologize about and it's so beautiful that you're this aware Mm -hmm. um and I just think we need to keep learning unlearning and changing this culture so that we are more inclusive of all humans yeah I've had people from the exec board reach out to me saying, I'm so sorry if I ever said anything or made you feel a certain way. Um, That was not my intention. They were kind of just like following the bylaws. And something that I touched on in my how to come out in a sorority video is the bylaws regarding date parties. So before, I think it was 2018, you could pretty much only bring a guy to a date party. It It was a known thing. Unless you were a friend visiting out of town, you had to get like permission. Like you had to make sure that the social chair knew that this girl was coming and it couldn't be somebody in another sorority on campus. 
the ratio, they wanted to keep like a one-to-one, 50% guys, 50% girls to look cool to the rest of campus because it was a reputation to hold up. Um, And it wasn't until the bylaw changed that it was like, okay, we became more inclusive. You can bring a girl. But before it really stuck, it was, you can bring a girl, but it has to be someone you're crushing on. They said that in a meeting. And that would out you as a closeted lesbian or bisexual individual. So fucked up. So that was, so that was what was fucked up because it was, they had good intentions, but they were basically discouraging. They were like, seriously, guys, don't bring a girl unless you're interested. So wow. it was so dumb. And um, thank God that changed. And like I said, the years following up until now, more girls than ever have brought girl dates. And that's kind of been um, squashed. Yeah. Good. Good. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. I just hope that continues to happen. And I was actually supposed to go speak at my sorority this past spring and then. Which would be so cool. Like we should go on a tour around college campuses. and That, go was, that was literally my plan. So I was reaching out to people and um, I also wanted to like go talk to Tulane Panhel. And I mean, I think so much needs to change in like the college academic sphere even apart from Greek life. But um, yeah, it, I was on a mission to help change that. And I know it's still going to happen and it's still happening. Um, you know, even just speaking about this online and on this YouTube video right now. Uh, but it's definitely a mission of mine to normalize LGBTQ culture and love and just, you know, living authentically and really shifting this heteronormative narrative that exists within Greek culture. Yeah. And I don't want to scare anybody um, because I know you mentioned that when you rushed, you didn't know that you were gay up until, you know, senior year. I didn't know that I was gay when I rushed. And I want to make it clear, like, you can be gay in a sorority. Yeah. Not matter. You can still party with boys. You can still go to mixers. You can bring a girl to a date party. You know, you can dress up for Halloween and go to your fun Halloween parties at school. You do not need to be straight to be in a sorority. And I want to make that really clear because I know we talk about the challenges that we face being gay in a sorority, but the point is you can be whoever the hell you want and we're going to change that. I really truly thought like if I had been a lesbian and went into Rush with that label, that sorority girls wouldn't allow me into their into their sororities, which is crazy, which is crazy and so upsetting and so not true. Um, I always say that being your authentic self is like the biggest gift, the biggest gift. And you are here for a reason to be who you are and to sacrifice that is just, yeah, don't sacrifice that. already snapped. (laughs) How did your sisters feel about it when they found out about your sexuality? Um, I know we kind of touched on that, but like a quick recap yeah um they were amazing about it like I had all these fears that like they wouldn't want to change around me anymore or that Mm -hmm. they would think that like the times that like I was like snuggly with them like that they would take the wrong way or like I was scared that they would perceive that in like a different way or that I was like trying to get with them. They were amazing. Like they, we would joke around about it. They continued to like act the exact same around me and do all the same things that they used to do. Um, It changed nothing except for the fact that our relationship became more genuine and authentic. I love that. Yeah. If anything, it was better because you were able to be yourself and they loved you for you instead of what they thought you were because you were in the closet. Um, I had the same experience. One of my biggest fears specifically was I'm scared that people are not going to want to change in front of me. Mm-hmm. And that sounds, no, no one thinks about that other than us. You know, it's something that no one else has to think about, but all of a sudden you tell people that you like women and it's the same thing, how ridiculous it is if you flip it around It's like having somebody who's straight saying they're attracted to every man they come across, every man they come across. Yep, exactly. Like, no. So I was always nervous that people were going to 
second guess everything that I did, every touch, every hug, everything that I said that was like sarcastically flirting. Like, oh my God, I love that dress. You look gorgeous today. Totally. I'm not crushing on you. You're, that's just, you know. I ran through like every interaction I had ever had in my mind and was like, oh, nope, I can't do it. Like they're going to totally misinterpret all this. And they didn't do that at all. And I even expressed to them, like, I was scared that you guys were going to feel this way and that way about this and that, that moment. And they were like, we could never see you differently. Like you're still the same person. You're still my best friend. You're like, this is literally just about like who you are attracted to and who you want to like be in a relationship with. And how cool is that, that we can now have that conversation and like, I can actually learn more about you. Yeah. So going back to our friends loving us more, my, that's something that my mom said too. I was, you know, so scared. And I was like, I'm still the same Maddie. And she goes, I've never loved you more. Mm. She said, I've never loved you more because now I know who you truly are and you are being, I know, I'm like going to cry just thinking about it. But I think that there are a lot of different challenges on my journey that, you know, I'm not really highlighting in this video here right now. And I do also know that I'm sure there are a ton of people listening or watching this right now who, whose coming out experiences haven't been totally smooth sailing or haven't been easy, or maybe they got reactions that they didn't want or they weren't expecting to get. And I just want to say like, my heart goes out to you. I'm sending you so much love. And I want you to know that it really truly does get better. And people not processing your coming out in the way that you would have wanted them to or expected has everything to do with them and absolutely nothing to do with you. And you are amazing and perfect just the way you are. And you have a whole community and family like of people waiting to accept you and love you. Guys, isn't she amazing? This is like unbelievable. I'm, I'm so grateful that we got to have this conversation and like many more to come. And I hope that everybody watching this has felt inspired in some way or um, just heard and seen and understood because that's what we all want at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, I am up to some really awesome stuff inside of We The Rainbow, which is my coaching company, my next level personal development company for LGBTQ people. We have, you know, different signature group coaching programs. My signature program is called Unleashed. It's a six week program aimed to get you to live your most authentic life that you deserve to live, release limiting beliefs, fears, internalized shame, and walk away from this program really feeling connected to yourself and your authentic truth. So that is my signature program. If you have any questions about that, enrollment is opening very soon. Um, and we also have a free Facebook community that you should absolutely come and be a part of. We're always hosting fun events and having different trainings, self-love opportunities, and we would love to have you there. All of the information on We The Rainbow Unleashed, all the amazing programs that Ariel runs will be in the description below along with our social media. I know that, what? Sorry, I, I forgot to give my social media. My I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay it all out, it's gonna be beautiful. I know that my door is always open. You can DM me about anything, anytime. My Instagram is at Maddie Hollander and Ariel. Yeah, my Instagram is at Ariel D'Angelo and also at We The Rainbow Official. My TikTok is also the same as my personal Instagram, Ariel D'Angelo. And I post a lot on there. So we're always here to spread love and support you guys. And we hope that you resonated with what we shared today and sending you all so much love, light, and rainbows. Yes, all the rainbows. Uh, please make sure that you subscribe, like this video if you learned anything, if you love Ariel, who does not love Ariel. So give a thumbs up for Ariel and comment below anything that you want to see, any questions that you have. So yeah, click the subscribe button, turn on notifications. Um, thank you so much. I'm so happy that we did this.